part two. So I'm going back to the pages that I took out of the magazine to cut up and use later. And I'm just cutting them down to size so that they will fit in nicely with the A5 paper that I've made. So this is just where I'm going through cutting things out and also making piles of what I'll use and what I won't use. Any of the paper that I'm not using will go into my pile of recycled paper and at some point be turned into more pulp to make more homemade paper. collecting up all the pieces of paper and I'm folding them into two piles so I like to fold the handmade paper into thicker and thinner pieces then I can pair them up into signatures so there's a nice balance of thicker pieces which are more hardy and thinner pieces which are more likely to rip. Once I've done this, I'm using my magazine pieces of paper and folding them as well. Then I will take the handmade paper, a piece of the thick and the thin and a magazine page and form them into a three piece signature. my camera angle wrong so this is hard to see but basically I'm just opening up each of the pieces of paper and slotting them in. The next step is trimming. I used to do this before putting it in signatures but it works a lot better when the signature is together you get a much smoother cut. So I'm just measuring it out on my board and cutting so all the signatures are the same size. So next I'm going through and I'm finding the centre page and I'm just measuring up where the holes for the binding will go. So firstly I'll measure it out and mark with a pencil. Then I'm using my leather punch to make the holes through the three pages to where the binding will go later. Now I got this method from another YouTube video uh, by Nerdforge so I will link that below. They do a really amazing overview of how to do this particular type of binding. So basically I've set it up on a chair because I don't have a proper setup and now I'm just using embroidery thread to sew the binding in and each signature into the book. I'm just twisting it around the end binding so that it holds nice and tight. The last thing you want is your binding to come loose. I'm also using embroidery thread because it looks pretty. It's not something that's traditionally used for book binding because it does not have uh, a good life to it. But my books are not particularly designed for hard use so I don't see it wearing out any time in the future. So 
So now that I've finished the binding, I tie off the end and I'll cut the binding off the chair, making sure that there's still a little bit of room for me to glue down the edges. Now I'm just taking a cut off of a linen fabric I have for the binding. So I'll make sure all the edge bindings are placed down and then glue onto the linen before applying more glue to the pages so that it fits well. Next I'm applying rubber bands just to hold the binding in place while it dries. You can also do this with string but I find the rubber bands quite easy and I don't have any trouble with them coming off when the glue dries. So I've removed the rubber bands and now I'm just stretching out the book and trimming it a bit. So it's been drying for about two days now just to make sure all the glue is completely dry. The next part is, is I'm using a bit of string for the end binding. So I will tape it down with some washi tape and then using two needles, I will start sewing the binding to the end of the book. So with this, I've tied the two ends of embroidery thread together and then I'm sewing about two to three millimeters below the end of the book so that it forms a nice attachment at the end, swapping thread every time I come to a new signature. So I've found that doing about six stitches in each colour works really well for the finish that I'm after. When I finish sewing, I will use the other thread and do a stitch underneath the sewing that I have just done. So it has a really clean finish and then I'll start on the next colour. Again, doing six stitches and keeping the ends and the other thread out of the way so it doesn't become messy. So I'll repeat this for each signature until the end before tying off the thread and repeating. When I choose the embroidery threads I'm going to use, I firstly match it to the cover that I've selected so that the colors work well together and then I'll make sure I have enough of each thread before I start sewing. I find that using contrasting colours can create a really beautiful finish. So I'm just repeating now on the other end. I found when doing this book it was really good to have the magazine pages in the middle. It meant they didn't tear as easily and I got a cleaner finish when doing the edge bindings. 